Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. In this episode I'll be going through the basics of Blender by creating one of these funny little animal things. This is meant as a beginner's exercise, but I'm not going to go through the basic interface. So hopefully you've had a few goes at Blender already and understand how to move things around. This is meant as more of an exercise, so take a look at the shape and see if you can build it first, and then see how I've done it and compare your results. I've also got my screencast keys down at the bottom left here, so if you get stuck, you can see what I'm doing. So let's start with the basic cube, and I'm going to press Control 3 to subdivide it three times. And that adds a subdivision surface modifier. If I go to my modifiers over here, you can see that my views now has three subdivisions on it. And I can put the render up as well, so when I render it, it will be exactly the same. You can press Control 2, 3 or 4, and you can see the views changing over here as I do that. So I'll go back to 3 and work with this. So if I go into edit mode now with tab, I can now edit the shape by moving points around and edges and faces. What I want to do first though is cut this up, and I can do that by pressing Control R. You can also find some of these tools down here. I just prefer using the shortcuts. Now, depending on where I move my mouse is where the cut's made. I want it down this side, and I want two cuts, so I'm gonna use my wheel, wheel it up once, and left click twice. And that will put the cuts nice and evenly. And I'm going to do the same down this side, so Control R, use my wheel, left click. Now, left click once, and you can move it around, but left click again, and it will set it. If you have moved it slightly, if you just right click, that will put them in the center for you. So I did that so I could have these four edge faces to make some legs but I need to go to face mode for that. I can go up here, or I can just press three on my keyboard, and then I'm in face mode. So I'll select this one, shift select this one, this one, and this one, and E to extrude, and E to extrude will pull out faces, and you move your mouse and pull them out. Now they're a bit rounded at the end. If I press E to extrude again, that adds what we call a proximity loop or a supporting loop, and that will make your edges sharper. So the closer you have your loop cuts together, the sharper your edges are. You can see there's no proximity loops here, so it's very rounded. Now let's make a head, so Control R once again, and I'll move my mouse to this part. Again, if I move my mouse, it will show you the different loop areas I can cut, and I want to cut just here and bring it up really slightly. So left click again to set, and then I want to grab this face. But I'm now back to edge mode, because when we do a loop cut, you go to edge mode, so I press three, in order to go to face mode. Then I can select this face, E to extrude, and pull it out. I'll just come around here to the side, E to extrude again, and this time I'll grab it downwards with G and just pull it downwards. But be careful when you do that. If you do it from a different angle, and you press G and pull it downwards and you move your mouse, it might go to a different area. So I can constrain it to the Z axis by pressing Z. So it'll only move up and down in the Z axis. So I'll undo both those things just to be sure that I get it in the right place. E to extrude, G, then Z, and pull it downwards. E to extrude. This time I'm going to press S to scale and scale it up, and he's going to have a funny snout. So I'll extrude that once more out here, and this time I'm going to press I for inset. So that does an extrusion, but it also does the scale at the same time. So it's like pressing E, then S. And I'll put it to about there, and then E to extrude and pull it inwards. So he's got this funny snout. Let's do a tail at the back. So I want to grab this face. And in order to do that, make sure you're in face mode and select it and then press E to extrude again. I'm going to scale this one down so it looks more like a tail and maybe grab it in the Z axis and pull it up like that. Lastly, I'll do a couple of funny eyes. It's probably a good idea to save your work at this point because it's Blender 2.8, it's still in beta and it may crash. So if I grab these two faces here, E to extrude and pull them up, and there may be one more proximity loop, so E to extrude. Now that's very square looking, so that might not work, but maybe what I'll do is grab this edge loop here and pull it down. In order to do that, I can Alt, left click, but I've made a mistake there. I'm still in face mode, so I'm selecting face loops rather than edge loops. So you can select face loops like this, as you can see, by holding down Alt and left clicking. But I want to select this edge loop round here. So I'll go to Edge Mode, or 2 on my keyboard, and Alt, left click. And I'll get both of them, so Alt, Shift, left click to get both of these edge loops. G, then Z to grab in the Z axis. And then I'm going to press S to scale. And you can see that scaling them 
together. So the point in the middle, it will scale by. And I don't want that. I'd like to scale them on their individual origin. So I'll right click to undo that. And up here we have a nice button where we can say individual origins. If I select that and press S to scale, it will scale in their individual origins. So by themselves rather than taking them both together. Okay, that's not too bad, but actually I want to bring these two bits back. So grab in the Y axis, which is the green and pull that back. So I'm going to get some eye sockets. If you're not sure about the axes, they're up here and you've got the axis guides here as well. Okay, so I want to make a hole for my little eyes here. So let's press three on my keyboard, which is face mode up here. Select these here, press I to inset and then E to extrude. And then we've got these weird looking eye sockets. They're a bit sharp at the moment. So I might want to select the face loops around here. So if I press Alt and click there, you can see it selected that face loop. It's difficult to see in solid mode. So if I press Z and go to wireframe, you can see that I've selected that edge loop in there. And I want to select this one in here. So Alt Shift right click and it's got that one. I'm still on individual origins. So if I scale this, it will scale them down individually. Let's go back to solid frame Z and then move my mouse across to solid mode. Now that's a bit better, I think. Needs a bit more height, I would say. So I can scale this in the Z axis to give it a bit more height. It's sharpening up the top of the eyelid, that's fine, because I can now press on these two shapes, grab in the Z axis and pull that up so it's got sort of bigger eyes. Lovely stuff. So out of edit mode, all that's left to do is to add some eyeballs and maybe I'll put a mouth in as well. So back into edit mode, I'll do the eyeballs in a second and I'll do those with separate objects and just add a sphere in there. Control R, let's do a loop cut round here. I need to do two actually to make a mouth. So there's two loop cuts there with my wheel, left click and right to set. Then I want to grab this face. So I press three, grab the face, E to extrude and pull it in. And he's got a sort of shocked mouth at the moment. Now what I would like to do is make it a bit of a smile. So I'll do a loop cut round the whole middle. There's possibly better ways of doing this but this is just one way and it's nice and quick. So a loop cut around the middle, double click, double left click, or left click, then right click to set it. Lots of different ways of doing things. And I'm going to select this edge and this edge here with shift and then pull it down. And now it's smiling at us. Now, can you see when I bring the loops together, it starts sharpening up these edges. So you've just got to be a bit careful that you don't get your edges too close. So I might just grab it and bring it up in the Z slightly and it looks a little bit softer there, that's nice. So funny shaped monster. Now he's not very smooth at the moment, that's fairly easy to sort out. You right click and press shade smooth and now he's got this nice smooth look to him. So let's quickly put some eyeballs in the sockets. If I shift right click, that will bring my cursor to this point and then I can shift A to add mesh UV sphere. Scale that down so it fits in the socket. Grab and move it into position and just set my size so I'm happy. Right click, Shade Smooth. And let's duplicate that, Shift D, right click. Now I've got a duplicate in exactly the same place. Grab in the X axis and move it across. Now I'm not doing any mirror modifiers, that's for another time. But you could easily mirror this down the middle to make life a bit easier for yourself. So I want to do a bit of rendering and use the EV Render Engine. So let's go across to Shading. So if I click on the Render tab here, you can see we're in EV and I can set up new materials for things. We'll start with the body. So I'll call this body and I'll change the base color to a nice soft blue. It's a bit shiny at the moment I feel like, so I'll put the roughness up and let's change the eyes, press new and some simple white eyes is absolutely fine. I'll bring the roughness down and maybe I want to give him some pupils. The easy quick way for that is just to grab both of these, duplicate them, shift D, come around to the side slightly, grab in the Y axis, pull them forwards and scale them right down. And I'll grab in the Y axis again and pull them back in. And I'll change these material to black. And let's just make sure that one has the same material. There we go. Let's give him a plane to stand on. So Shift A, Mesh, Plane. It's better to work like this in layout mode. So I'll go back to layout, scale up my plane, grab it and pull it down in the Z axis. So G then Z. And if I look from the bottom, I can press G then Z and just see where the feet intersect. So it's a nice plane for him to stand on. Or her, perhaps. And there we go, we've got our nice elephant. 
I'll put a link in the description to my tutorial about how you can make it spin around and have a nice shadow on the bottom. But hopefully you got something out of this and seen how you can use the subdivision surface modifier to create cute little monsters. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.